Have you paid or are you planning to pay for proofreading? Then I've got bad news for you because in the long run paying for proofreading is wasting your money, is literally like burning your money. Why? Well, let me explain in this video. So just to be very clear at the very beginning, I know that there are a lot of um, services out there offering proofreading of research papers or theses and this video is not, uh, you know, against those services, right? But it's just to explain to you that really in the long run, if you're a PhD student or a researcher and you're, you have to constantly pay for proofreading of your papers, then you really are burning your money. And there is a much better way to do things which doesn't involve paying so much money. And I want to show you how this is done in this video. Before we dive in there, my, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers for high impact journals. So why do I think that proofreading is a waste of money? Well, one of the most important reasons is that typically you don't really learn anything from proofreading. The way that proofreading works typically is that, you know, you send your text um, to the proofreader, um, he or she reads it, corrects all your mistakes and sends you back the corrected version. I mean, you can go over the corrections and ask them to keep track changes and stuff like this, but most people don't because they just want to hand in the, the paper and submit it, right? So what happens is that, you know, of course, your paper might be ready for submission and there will be fewer mistakes in it because it has been proofread, but you still don't know how to do that yourself, which means that the next time you're writing a research paper, you're going to have to pay for proofreading again. So that's why I think, you know, you're just burning your money, right? Instead, you know, what, what you want to do is learn the skill yourself. It's a little bit like, you know, this analogy that they have in economics between um, teaching people how to fish and giving people the fish. So paying for proofreading, it's a bit like getting the fish um, delivered, you know, and beautifully roasted and beautifully presented on a nice plate in a nice restaurant. And of course, it's going to be an amazing meal if you've chosen your proofreading services or your restaurant correctly, right? Um, but it's also going to be expensive and you haven't learned how to do it yourself. So the following times you will have to pay again and proofreading services, if you want to do that properly, can be really, really expensive. Um, I went recently myself to, to find out what the, what the rates of proofreading are and, you know, if we're talking about really reputable companies for proofreadings, you know, like Taylor & Francis, which is also a publishing company, they, they can charge upwards to like a thousand euros for proofreading of one article, right? That's, that's a lot of money. If you're planning to publish three, four, five papers every single year, which is what most researchers want to do, then you're really looking at between anything between three and five grand every single year in proofreading services. Where on the other hand, you could learn the skill and just do it yourself. And it's not that time consuming and it's not that difficult. I personally have never paid for proofreading services. I, I've always done it myself and you know, my papers have never been rejected for the, for the language, for the grammar, for mistakes or things like that, right? So you can, you can do it yourself as well. And, and another reason I think why proofreading, you know, is a little bit like burning your money, apart from the fact that you, you know, you're just getting the fish and you're not learning how to actually fish, is also that you have no guarantee that the way is going to be corrected will actually be appropriate because you know the proofreader cannot get into your own head right and of course they can correct some of the you know some of the obvious mistakes but in order to be really able to um, to change the text and to edit it scientifically appropriately for high impact journals, they need to understand what, what you were thinking when you wrote that sentence that at the moment doesn't make any sense, right? 
but typically a proofreader can't do that, right? So what they, they might either be changing things in a way that is not appropriate for, um, for your paper, for your discipline, and without knowing the context or without actually knowing what you're thinking. So again, a much better way of going about it is to learn that skill yourself or to work with a coach, right? That will help you to, to develop that skill and help you to write research papers regularly, which is what we do at Academic English Now. And if you're interested in working with us, then you can schedule a completely free one-to-one -one strategy session where we're going to dive in into the challenges that you have, your goals, and we'll also outline um, a personalized plan for you that will help you to regularly publish papers, right? So the bottom line is that, you know, of course, if you want to go ahead and pay for proofreading services, you know, each of us is free to do whatever they want to do, right? But ultimately, if you're someone who is planning to regularly write research papers, right? If you're a PhD student or a researcher and you're going to want to write, you know, three, four papers every single year. Um, for the years to come, then proofreading is really burning your money because you're looking at paying, you know, three, four, five grand every single year for proofreading services. Instead, learn the skill yourself.